Well, everybody, it's uh, politics as usual, and I'm Dick Vaughn, and I'm delighted today we have a candidate who's joining us today who's running uh, for the Board of Selectmen in Charlton. As you know, with all that's going on in this world, uh, we have an election coming up, and, uh, and uh, so I've invited uh, some folks to stop by, and uh, with me today is Josh Sapa, and Josh is, is a candidate uh, for the Board of Selectmen. Well, you know, Josh, I've been thinking, somewhere along... I'm guessing in the last three or four months, you sat down with yourself and had a conversation and said, Josh, what do you really want to do? And somewhere in there, you decided that being a member of the Board of Selectmen would be fun or would be exciting or would be something. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm trying to find out, and my question is really this, how did all this transpire and why do you really want to be on the Board of Selectmen? Great question. Uh, first, thank you uh, very much for the opportunity inviting me to be on the show. Um, I'm always looking for opportunities to connect with our residents and, and, and get my voice heard, um, you know, what, what I'm looking to do. So um, very simple. Um, about three or four years ago, I, I really started paying a little bit more attention to some of the politics and some of the things uh, and the issues that were going on in town. And um, over the last couple of years, I've had a lot of opportunities to work for nonprofits and um, just had opportunities to just better myself. You know, what, what, what's your legacy? What do you what do you leave? Um, so um, I came across this opportunity, connected with um, some, you know, some uh, people that are involved in local politics, had some discussions about them, and um, didn't necessarily think it was fun. It definitely is going to be a lot of work, but um, I just saw an opportunity there to address some of the issues um, that the, the towns had over the last couple of years. And um, for me personally, just in my, in my work history, my background, being an entrepreneur, I, I love to fix problems. Um, so that, that's, that's what I saw as an opportunity to address some of these issues that have been um, going on for years in, in our town and um, just you know, get, get out there and, and, and make something happen. You know, I understand that uh, three years goes by very quickly and we do have some uh, rather large and significant issues. But um, just any, anything that I can do to move those along and, and right the ship, so to speak, um, I, I think that um, we need some proactive people in our government really addressing issues and not just kicking the can down the road, so to speak. Well, that's, that's interesting. And, I, and I, I will have to say that we sit today with a whole new set of parameters, uh, even meeting, having meetings on Zoom. I Absolutely. Mean, in, in transparency, I'm a member of the Board of Assessors, and I'm on the ballot this year uh, as a member uh, running for re-election. And we have our meetings on Zoom. So right. things have changed dramatically. Absolutely. And we face, we face an election uh, where we hope we get people out right. uh, to vote. And then we have a town meeting coming up. And I understand now it's going to be held in a parking lot. And because uh, and, they can't go inside with it, right. obviously. Right. Uh, I thought at one point maybe they'd take it to one of the high school football fields and put people in the grandstand or something. I, but that's their job. We'll figure, yeah, we'll figure that but, out. <laughs> but, at, but at that point, uh, some of the things that uh, you see that you need to work on, you said you, you want to get involved, you want to get things going. Uh, what are some of the things that you would like to see uh, Josh accomplish? Absolutely. So um, one of the things that really sparked my interest and uh, made me a little bit more aware of some of the issues that the town has uh, was the discussion on the safety complex. So... Um, you know, that, that's already moving forward, and, and I would certainly like uh, to be part of that solution. I know right now it's not an issue of whether we want it or not. It's an issue of how we fund it. Um, so um, certainly would love to participate in moving that along. But um, some of the other issues that I think that we need to address are um, uh, our roads. I just had a conversation with uh, more than uh, one resident about some of the roads, uh, how they're trafficked uh, by high-speed commercial vehicles, um, some of the uh, issues that we have with water um, that we need to build out so we can get some commercial development to offset our taxes um, down the road. I mean, I think there's, there's uh, just a lot of little problems that if we can start to, as a town, I think we're all in agreement that these need to be addressed. I think the issue is how do we address them properly and, and keep our taxes at, at, at reasonable and to keep them low where they are now without blowing them up, so to speak. Well, you know, we have, we have I, t I call it the three L's. Charlton is a unique position. We have the three L's. We mm. have location. Route 20, Mass Turnpike between exits 9 and Absolutely. 10. Absolutely. Great location. So we have location. We have land. We have plenty of land. We're the second largest land mass in the state. And we have low taxes. Yeah. So we are an attractive situation. One of the other things that I've seen is there are 
there were a lot of folks in town, and I respect it, this is just the way it is, who still think we're a small town. Unfortunately, in the past seven or eight years, we've really grown. Absolutely. Uh, we, 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 you see some of the values of the homes that are selling in this community. And so, and, and, and some of the growth that we've enjoyed. Um, and so we, we, we are on the verge of, uh, of that growth. And, and, uh, and, then it, and that requires leadership. Absolutely. And, and so uh, getting back to the, you know, one of the things that uh, I, I've mentioned, in fact, when I've watched the, the, the Zoom meeting, uh, I, I kept saying, wait a minute, somebody, you mentioned water and you mentioned a fire complex. We happen to have, as our congressman, the chairman of the House of Representatives Ways and Means Committee. His name is Dick Neal. Richard Neal is our congressman. Okay. He's chairman of Ways and Means. He's got the wallet of the United States government. <laughs> Somebody needs to, we brought him in. I, my wife and I had him come in to talk to the water department about some funds to, so we could put water in this town. Absolutely. And give people real water, right. our own water. And uh, so there's an opportunity with the, uh, with the uh, fire complex because they're talking about infrastructure. Yeah. That all comes under infrastructure. Yeah. And, and they're talking about $2 trillion, you know, to spend on infrastructure in the country. Certainly, Charlton ought to put their hand up. I 100% you know. agree with you. So, so there's opportunities. I agree. You know, with, with, with the senators and the congressmen uh, to reach out to them and say, hey, we need some help. Absolutely. You know, Definitely, definitely need, need help. help. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and that's a vehicle to use. I, I agree with you. I mean, to your point in, in the, uh, the size of the town and, and people referring to the small town, I think people want to refer to the small town in, in the sense of character and keeping, you know, and, and that's fine. And, and I could totally appreciate that. But the reality is, and having conversations with our, both our fire chief and our police chief, is that everything around us continues to grow uh, right. more so than in some of the uh, development in, in our town. And um, as far as infrastructure, I'm just looking to keep pace with what's going on in our town. But to their point, we're affected by everything around us. Absolutely. So, you know, th there's, there's issues here that we can't seclude ourselves and, and put ourselves well, uh, in a snow globe, so to speak. We, we have to address what's going on around us. Well, that's the point. When, when, when the community is growing, which it is, that means there's additional pressure on the police additional pressure on the fire. Absolutely. We, we, we need more police officers. We do. There are nights we only have two, two cruisers on the road at night, you know, and we have 45 square miles of right. land. Right, so that's a lot of driving. You, you, mentioned, you <laughs> mentioned, you know, roads where there's quote unquote speeding. Look, everybody drives way too fast. And especially now with a lot of people working from home. Sure. The roads are a little more open. You know, you see the thing on television where yep. the state police are riding 100 mile an hour yeah. on the mass turnpike. That's crazy. What is the driver thinking about? You know, but we drive too fast. You can see it. You go down, just look in this community, how people drive. And, and so there's not enough control because we don't have enough to do it. You're, you're, the, and, the, and, and you the only issue, can do what you can do. The issue 100% is what you yep. just said is, is the control, whether it's a controlled intersection, whether right. it's a police officer, right. an extra patrolling, all of this costs money. Yep. I'm not saying that we need to write checks and, and, no, no. and this is going to happen overnight, but as you had mentioned before, there are opportunities out there to address some of these issues proactively right. and not affect taxes at all. That's so right. why, why aren't we addressing it? Yep. You know? Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. It, it, you know, one of the things that uh, I don't care whether it's, you know, one of the things that I've shared with people, and we have to understand it and accept it. Nobody has ever said that the government knows how to run a government. <laughs> we have proved beyond a reasonable doubt we don't know how to do that. Okay? That's a fact. Okay. We, 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 you know, we, let's look at it for what it is. What is really going on, the number one business in the United States of America is the United States government. The number one business in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. They have more employees, they spend more money, they take in more money than any other company. The biggest business in the town of Charlton is the town of Charlton. Has more employees, takes in more money, spends more. So we need to start running them like they're a business. I agree with you. Because that's what they are. I agree with you. And, and there's a great saying 
that my dad used to drill into me. You cannot spend what you do not have. Absolutely. Okay. So we all have to understand that. And so these governments have really become a business. We have to look at them as they are a business. I, I agree with you. And, and run them like they're a business. Uh, and, and when you do that, you have a whole different perspective. It's a very yeah. excellent point. And even coming from a biz background, I yeah. use the expression one versus need. Yeah. You know, what, what you want and what you need when oh. you're at the wheel of that business becomes a t totally different conversation. And, and from the event point, one of the things that concerns me about the other two uh, candidates for um, selectment is, is they, they seem to be very wishy-washy on those points um, and, and focused on the dollar amounts that are tagged to some of the issues and, and the complexity of some of the problems that we would have. It's not an excuse to overlook them and bypass them. One of your jobs in, in government is being an effective leader. And if you're not standing up there and being honest with the residents about why a fire department, why a police department needs to be built, why it's important to have uh, water for commercial development and some of our residential developments that have contaminated uh, wells, wells. Uh, th th those are things that are needs, not wants. And uh, I, I think they blur the line uh, from some of the comments that I've heard them make about well, but that, that's nice to want that, and, and spend, but no one wants to spend the money. No, this is something that we need, and the fact that it needs to be spent money, is it's, it's, this needs to protect our residents. This isn't to spend money for the sake of spending money. Well, you have to understand something else, too. We've had situations in the past three or four years where we have had opportunities in this town with folks who want to come in and open a business. Sure. And some of those businesses were going to generate two and three and four million Millions. dollars Absolutely. in tax revenue to the town. Yep. Now, I'm an assessor. I can tell you, 85% <laughs> of our tax load is, is, is borne by the homeowners. Absolutely. We need, we need a bigger base to, to reduce that. That 100%. should be down about 60%. Right. And 40% should be taken care of by Absolutely. the business community. Absolutely. And, and, and to your point and, earlier, we have so much land. We have so many resources at the town to accomplish that. That's right. There's no reason why we shouldn't. That's right. And so, so we have opportunities. Uh, I mean, look what uh, Treehouse has brought to the community. Absolutely. And, and, and there were people that didn't want that to begin oh, with. I thought... Uh, I, I, I got it. But, but what I'm saying is they're expanding up there. They're putting in Absolutely. A, a warehouse. That's all tax revenue. Yep. That's all dollars into the, the town. I just drove by a, a day ago. They're fixing part of the road. Yep. Well, they, they're putting in new ramps. Yeah. So yeah. they don't get them pulling around. Exactly. And, and, uh, and so they... But that's just one example. Sure. And, and, I, and I, I really think that the town is in a great position. We have a great community. We do. Wonderful people, a great, great community. And we, we have a great opportunity to really move on and move forward. And, uh, and it, it requires leadership. That's what it comes down to. I agree. So, but anyway, you're up for, you're up for a, this is the first time you ever ran for anything? Uh, I, I was asked to run when uh, I'm originally from New Jersey, and I was asked to run for um, positions before, but because I own a business in town, yeah. there was a, 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 you know, you, a conflict you, of interest there. You yeah, you had to be careful. Yeah. So that, I've served on nonprofit boards, right. um, done fundraising for um, the larger regional nonprofits. Right. Um, I was a treasurer for Big Brothers Big Sisters um, in uh, New Jersey for quite some time. So. I have some experience, and, and uh, my uh, family was very well um, connected uh, right. politically in New Jersey as well. Right. So I, I know the lay of the land. Right. You know, and the biggest challenge you have is you only have one vote out of five. So you, you know, sure. I always get a kick out of people say, I'm going to. Right. You aren't going to do anything. Right. You're going to propose it. Exactly. And you better get two people that agree with you, you know. And because it's a numbers game. I agree. That's all it is. And I think that's what, that even shows even more the important uh, the need for good leadership and uh, people that are looking to be proactive in our right. government. Yeah. And so that's the story. So, Josh, next thing we got is an election coming up. And uh, I wish you well. I hope everything works to your favor. And I want to thank you very much for stopping by. And uh, you got 30 seconds. Uh, again, uh, thank you for having me. Um, Never mind me. You got to talk to those voters. I'm talking to them right now. I just wanted to say thanks before uh, you wrap things up because you're very uh, <laughs> you're very good at moving uh, the the program forward. Um, so again, um, I, I've put myself out there. I, I I think everybody is very well aware of, of what my points are. We need to invest in infrastructure. We need to address some of these deficits and uh, some of the issues that are ongoing over the last past years. 
definitely need to open our eyes to some of the development that's going on and the increase in population, not only in our town, but around us as well. And um, we can do this in, in a strategic way where taxes will stay reasonable. Okay, this, this isn't going to be something that happens overnight. This is something that just needs to uh, kind of get, get the uh, ball rolling, so to speak. And I, I think a lot of these other problems will kind of work themselves out. Um, but, you know, again, effective leadership, super, super important. We need people that know what they want to do when they're in there. They know what the town needs and um, are not, um, you know, open ended in, in what their statements are. I, I, I want people in there that are going to show me that they have a very straight line as, as far as what they think needs to accomplish when they get into office. Terrific. Thank you very much. There you are, folks. Politics as usual.